If we are the most capable species on the planet, should we be talking about our possibilities or should we be talking about our limitations? Whenever anybody writes or says, oh, we are human, they are always referring to their limitations, never to the possibilities of being human. This is the biggest city all over the India, Magad Empire, you can say. This is one of the The fear is simply because you are not living with life, you are living in your mind. Thank you. Your fear is always about what's going to happen next. That means your fear is always about that which does not exist. If your fear is about the non-existent, your fear is hundred percent imaginary. If you're suffering the non-existential, we call that insanity. So, people may be in just socially accepted levels of insanity, but if you're afraid or if you're suffering anything which does not exist, it amounts to insanity, isn't it? People are always suffering either what happened yesterday or what may happen tomorrow. So your suffering is always about that which does not exist, simply because you're not rooted in reality. You're always rooted in your mind. Mind is one part of it is memory, another part of it is imagination. Both of them are in one way imagination, because both of them don't exist right now. You're lost in your imagination, that's the basis of your fear. If you were rooted in reality, there would be no fear. Every moment of your life you're in fear? No. So, when you're not in fear, just stay like that. Because to create fear, you have to use excessive imagination. To not be in fear, you don't have to do anything. Fear is happening. Because of excessive imagination, things that have not happened, you're creating. What may happen in your mind happens in thousand different formats and most probably it never happens. The things that you fear, take hundred things that you have feared, probably ninety-nine of them never happened, isn't it? Yes? So your fear, your fear is always about that which does not exist. You cannot fight or you cannot overcome that which does not exist. We can overcome something that exists. You cannot overcome that which does not exist. You just have to give up that effort. Enjoy the fear. After all, it's your making. You like horror movies. Yes, sir. I mean, you're saying no, but you, you're producing them. It's just they're not making money, that's all. Fear means you're producing horror movies in your mind. Nobody else is willing to watch. Tch, that's bad for the producer. But you're producing them. So, you produce something else. Produce a comedy, a love story, suspense, thriller. Try and see today. Just sit down, produce a love story, a suspense thriller, a comedy. Five, five minutes mo movies you make in your mind. Really, start using your mind differently. It's just gotten into your pattern. Just gotten into your pattern of just creating horror movies all the time. You have watched enough horror movies, the boy. Create something else. <laughs> Even it's not that if you produce these movies, those things will happen in your life. Still they may not happen, at least you enjoy the movie. In reality it may not happen, so what? At least you enjoy what's happening in your mind. If you cannot enjoy what's happening in the world, isn't it? That much privilege every human being deserves, isn't it? Even if the world is not kind to him, at least his own mind should be kind to him, should produce some nice movies. <laughs> if you try to control the variety of situations that may pop up in your face tomorrow morning, all that will happen is you will become a very limited life. 
you would step out into the world and do whatever that needs to be done. Only if you have an assurance, no matter what you walk into, you will not lose yourself. You will walk full stride, otherwise you'll only be a half a step. Most human beings are half steps because the fear of suffering, if this happens, what will happen to me? That happens, what will happen to me? If you're well managed within yourself, you know how to manage your thoughts, you know how to manage your emotions, you know how to manage your body, your chemistry, your energy. If you know how to manage all this, what does it matter if you walk into hell, I'm asking? If you are well managed, if you are a heaven within you, what does it matter where you go? Hell also will be an interesting place to go. But if you are ill-managed, then you want to be in a nice place all the time. You will not step out into anything. I am not saying this is wrong, this is against nature. Because in nature, every life is aspiring to be as much as it can be, isn't it? Every life is naturally aspiring, this is not a philosophy, this is not an ideology that you must do this or that. It is natural and intrinsic for every life that it will do as much as it can. From an earthworm, from a worm to an insect to a bird to an animal to a tree, every one of them are trying to be full-fledged life. If you go against this simply because of the fear of suffering, then all possibilities of exploring the nature of being human, the tremendous immensity of being human is just lost upon humanity. Today you will see this everywhere when people say, I am only human. They are talking about the limitations of being human. They are not talking about the possibilities of being human, isn't it? When if we are the most intelligent species on the planet, if we are the most capable species on the planet, should we be talking about our possibilities or should we be talking about our limitations? Whenever anybody writes or says, oh, we are human, they are always referring to their limitations, never to the possibilities of being human. This is because the, the most fundamental things have not been taught in our education systems, how to handle your thought and your emotion. Your psychological drama has gone out of control. It's a badly directed drama, believe me. If it was a well-directed drama, you would take it to the conclusion that you want, isn't it? Because it's a badly directed drama, just about anybody can take charge of it. Who is the director of your psychological drama? Just about anybody, isn't it? Anybody can make it into a tragedy. The reason why people have not even learned to manage their thought and emotion, by the time you're ten, you should have learnt it. At sixty, people still don't know how to manage their thought and emotion. They're standing up like ghosts in their life. They don't need anybody's help. They can go on endlessly creating suffering for themselves. Now, suppose you did not know how… you have normal hands and you do not know how to use it. What would you call yourself? No, you… you tell yourself, don't tell me, it's okay. Whatever you think, if you have a normal process of mental faculty and you do not know how to use it, it means the same thing, yes or no? Does it mean the same thing or no? You don't have a normal hand, then you can't use it, that's different. We will look at you compassionately. But you have a normal hand and you don't know how to use it. Whatever word you use to call yourself, don't tell me. But the same thing goes if you don't know how to use your thought and emotion towards your well-being, isn't it? Because ill-managed, because the fundamentals of life are not grasped. What is the nature of my existence? If you don't know this, how do you manage it? Only if you grasp the nature of something, then you learn to manage it, isn't it? You don't even see what it is, how to manage it, there is no way to manage it. So the first and foremost thing, that's why, is called realization, you must understand this. In this country, in this culture, we never refer to any kind of 
spiritual realization as an attainment. We only said it is a realization. Realization means you simply saw what is already there. You did not invent anything. You did not climb the top of a mountain. You are beginning to see everything just the way it is. But that has become such a rarity <laughs> that it is being hugely valued. Human beings are right now like this. A caged bird, if you keep a bird caged for a long period of time and then one day you took off the door of the cage, still the bird won't fly. From inside it will protest that it's not free, but it will not fly. Human condition is just that. For all other creatures, nature has drawn two lines within which they have to live and die and that's what they do. But only for human beings, there's only bottom line, there's no top line and that's what they're suffering. If their life was also fixed, like every other creature's life, they wouldn't be stressed, they wouldn't be anxious, they wouldn't be struggling how to handle their own intelligence. And that is what you're seeking and knowing. You may seek it in the form of relationships, you may seek it in the form of profession, you may seek it in the form of, form of nationality, ethnicity, community. God, heaven, hell, all you're trying to do is draw an artificial line which does not exist because freedom needs courage. Freedom needs a certain madness. <laughs> if you're very sane, you cannot be free because you will go between the two lines of logic. <laughs> to be free, it takes lot of strength that if you… First of all, what needs to happen if you want to be free is do you understand that all human experience has a chemical basis to it? Hello? What you call as joy is one kind of chemistry, misery is another kind of chemistry, stress is one kind of chemistry, anxiety another kind of chemistry, agony one kind of chemistry, ecstasy another kind of chemistry, at least ecstasy you know it's another kind of chemistry. I hear. <laughs> So, your experience of life has a chemical basis to it. This is the most superficial way of looking at it. There are other dimensions to it, but for your understanding. Or in other words, what you call as myself right now, you are a chemical soup. The question is only, are you a great soup or a lousy soup? Yes or no? Right now, if you have a chemistry of blissfulness, if you close your eyes, it's fantastic. If you open your eyes, it's fantastic. If somebody is here, it's fantastic. Nobody is here, it's very fantastic. Yes or no? But you have a lousy chemistry. If you look at them, if they smile at you, it's nice, not fantastic. If they look at you like this, suddenly it's a problem. If these people are happening just the way you want, your chemistry is reasonably balanced. If they do something that you don't like, boom, it goes somewhere else. So essentially, you have not looked at this mechanism. What is the basis of this? How it functions? How I can make it function at its highest level? If you don't learn how to handle this aloneness, you have not learned anything about life. This is the most beautiful thing. The most beautiful thing about life is, nobody can get here, it's just my space. Yes or no? Isn't this the most beautiful thing? Nobody can invade me. They can capture me, they can torture me, they can do so many things, but they cannot invade me because I have a space which is just my own. Isn't this the most wonderful aspect of your life? Don't suffer that. That is the most beautiful thing. What we do is just a certain… it's a certain game, life is, because it comes to an end. 
But the important Hi, thing everyone. is, how are you within yourself? Welcome to the jam room. If Hi, you are welcome here in such a way that you are truly driven by your needs, you will live a very meager life. I just want to try giving it my own interpretation. But if you can sit here without any need, but you will do whatever is needed, then you will live a magnificent life. Our mind is a tremendous gift where it remembers vividly every experience and every information that comes our way. Well, this can be transformed into a phenomenal imagination, but if you lose control over your imagination, if you lose the discrimination as to what is imagination and what is reality, what is future, what is present and what is past, then <laughs> your mind will become your present enemy. Most human beings are not suffering life, they're just suffering their memory and their imagination. What happened ten years ago, they're still suffering. What may happen day after tomorrow, they already suffer. This is not about life. This is about lack of control over two most fantastic faculties that human beings have, a vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination. Do not worry about your future. If you do your present well, future will naturally blossom.